Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back with another video. And today, I hope you guys are having a fantastic Father's Day. Uh, I'm making this video for the sheer reason that uh, this video is actually pretty much at this time now a year in the making. Uh, last year, I did a, you know, obviously my reactions to Transformers The Last Night and all the movies that led up to it. And I gave you guys a review, and over the course of time, my opinion somewhat changed. And now I've seen the film uh, again, recently, and so I decided to write down all of my thoughts and give them all to you so I can give you a, upon further review, review. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help us bring you more content like this. Okay, so last year, um, I obviously did everything. I went from going to, uh, you know, doing, my wife and I did full-blown reviews. It was like a half an hour long for each uh, movie leading up to the last night. And then obviously I went and I watched uh, Transformers the last night with my wife uh, on opening night. And then we did our, our in-the-car review, and then I did a full review after that, and then I did a live stream uh, where I was pretty much talking about the movie, the goods, the bads, and everything else like that. And the first time I saw the film, I really enjoyed it. And then the second time I saw it, I the, some of the stuff that I overlooked, I was like, all right, I get it. I, I, see, I see where they were going. But at the same time, I can see its faults now, and everything that everybody else is pointing out, all the other reviewers are pointing out, I can see it now. And then I saw it a third time, again, after my reviews and everything else like that were over, and I really didn't enjoy the film the third time around. Well, you know, now it's been a year, and I'm sitting there myself, I'm like, wow, like, like you know, I, my opinion, I, I, I've been saying that I didn't like the Transformers the last night, but in my review, it sounds I'm a little hypocritical because, you know, um, you know, I, I said that I liked the movie upon the first viewing, and I still stand by that feeling that I got when I first watched the movie. But I watched it again recently, and now I'm somewhere in the middle with it. And it's a good thing, and I'll tell you why. Because Transformers The Last Night was a very interesting film. It was either you absolutely hated it or you absolutely loved it, but there was no there was no tension. It wasn't like another film franchise that goes off and like literally beats you over the head with it. If you don't like it, you're some sort of like evil person. Um, but, you know, this this movie, there are a lot of cool elements to the to the film. But at the end, like, like there was things like, like when Bumblebee obviously gets blasted apart into a million pieces. And, you know, obviously, you know, trying to take some of the elements and different lores and stuff. I really, really liked, you know, Camelot being formed by, um, you know, with Cybertronian technology. And that a dragon was actually, you know, a combined element of the different, trans, you know, the different, uh, you know, Cybertronian knights. And I like that element, and I, I, you know, I didn't care for, obviously, things like Unicron being Earth, because I feel like that that's a cop-out. I didn't like Cybertron being in, like, shattered pieces and ended up being all over the place, all over, you know, the Earth. And I didn't like Quintessa as a villain. I felt that she, like, was, was lacking, and I felt that Nemesis Prime kind of lacked, too, because he was barely there. But there are so many good things, you know leading up to those points, but it felt like the movie was disjointed. And and that's really how I feel about this movie. I feel it's kind of like a mixed bag. I feel like there were some really cool parts and some really, like, hammy parts. To me, I, I, I didn't really like Unicron being Earth in, um, you know, in Transformers Prime, but they handled it well. They, they were at least able to make, like, a big giant dirt you know, Unicron and be on Earth and that's what like, you know, that they, they were fighting and then they actually went inside Unicron's core and actually killed him with the Matrix of Leadership without actually destroying Earth. And I'm wondering if they're going to actually end up doing that if they actually do make a sequel, which actually gets me to pretty much where they're going. You know, with, you know, obviously with Transformers Prime, they were able to handle it in such a way that they didn't have to end up destroying Earth, but here now 
in order for them to kill Unicron, like, what's gonna end up happening? Is he actually gonna transform? Is Earth actually going to be destroyed? Because at this point now, when Transformers The Last Night ends, you're like, all right, so Cybertron is literally hanging over um, Earth. What are they going to do? Where are they going to go from here? And when they ended Transformers the last night, they ended it on such a cliffhanger that you're like, all right, so Quintessa obviously is still around. She still wants to kill Unicron. Uh, obviously, all the people are saved. Now all the love interests are, you know, all that stuff is out of the way. Now all the kids and, you know, it was almost like they, they literally were like pulling things from from different Transformers series. I mean, from Transformers Prime with Earth being Unicron, and then Robots in Disguise having Cade be in a junkyard, you know, and then trying to do something with the, you know, with the girl being like adventurous, almost like Miko. So they were really trying to pull from Transformers Prime. And then, you know, actually bringing Cybertron to Earth, bringing a Quintesson is actually saying she's the prime of life, which leads me to a theory. I don't think she's actually the creator of the Transformers, or she, as she says that she is. I, you know, they they called her the Great Deceiver, so I don't think that she's actually that. You know, I mean, I think that she actually learned. Maybe she might be a trans, just a Transformer herself, who has the ability to, you know, mind control, because that's what she does with Optimus Prime, with the red scar across his face, turns him into quote unquote Nemesis Prime. Which also leads me to believe that Megatron himself was actually, um, you know, when when Gal Galvatron himself was actually Megatron reborn, he must have traveled to Cybertron somehow or got in touch with Quintessa. And we don't know how, we don't know when and how long ago that happened, but he ended up going back to Cybertron, get, got, probably was given a new form from Quintessa, which is how he got his new body. And which is a full-on transforming body and not this like weird thing they did in Age of Extinction. And then, you know, must have gotten rebuilt as Megatron. That's a theory, obviously. It's something that we don't know if they're going to do. And I've been saying in a couple videos, you know, you guys have been seeing my videos, and some of you guys are like, I don't believe it, or I don't I believe it, or I don't believe it, is that they're rebooting. But what they're actually doing is they're going back to uh, you know, Bumblebee, and they're going back to the 80s. And they said that, that you know, obviously that there's, there's talk that they can go and do an Optimus Prime movie, and that there's talk that they can do a time travel movie. Maybe this universe, the the Bayformers uh, universe, might have a one more movie in store after Bumblebee, where they can end that universe and maybe reconstitute it and finish up the story. I think that they can do that. But... And after watching Transformers the last night, I don't hate the film. I really don't hate Transformers the last night. I think Age of Extinction is worse. I think that Age of Extinction is the worst, followed by, um, you know, Revenge of the Fallen. I think that the last night is like right in the middle. I still think that Transformers Dark of the Moon is, num you know, is obviously number two, and I still think the first movie is the best out of the entire franchise. And I'm really looking forward to Bumblebee. I actually am. After seeing the trailer, after seeing it, I am looking forward to it. I'm optimistic. I don't think it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread, but I'm really hoping that going back to the 80s actually brings us what we love about Transformers back into the film franchise. And, and this movie wasn't as bad as, as everyone says that it is. It's, it's still Michael Bay. There's a lot of disjointed parts. There are parts that, you know, a lot of exposition. Or they have to talk about the history of the Transformers. And some of the dialogue is really wonky. That's something I want to actually discuss about this before I go into anything, before I, I, I wrap this up, is the dialogue. I really think that film writers and directors need to, like, think about how these conversations are going because when i'm watching transformers the last night i really picked up on it that there seems to be a lack of connection to dialogue with characters transformers should be talking to each other transformers should be having more conversations with humans you know the baby dinosaurs should have been talking the you know the dinobots should have had lines you know, they all should have had speaking roles. 
any conversation needs to be a little bit more natural. I didn't feel it being very natural in this film. There was kind of like, hey, no, I, you need to tell me or I'm gone. You, But you want to know, don't you, dude? And I'm like, that really feels a little off. It doesn't feel like the two lines go together. Maybe the scriptwriter felt that they did. I don't think that they did. If you watch G1 Transformers, I feel like they're actually having legitimate conversations. You watch Transformers Prime, they're having legitimate conversations. You watch the 1986 movie, they're having legitimate conversations. Even even the 2007 movie, I mean, felt a little bit more like things were connected better. This movie did not have that. The dialogue was very hammy. Hello. Hi. Kate. Hello. I'm Marie. Do you have a dog? Oh my goodness, hands like rough old maple. Is it tomorrow yet? You know, something else I wanted to talk about was Optimus Prime's dialogue specifically. Like, you know, in this movie, and pretty much in all of Michael Bay's films, and this really kind of goes along with his character, like, Peter Cullen himself, I think, has been outspoken about it as well, is the fact that, like, like almost every Transformer comes out and goes, I'll kill you. What have you done to my home? I will kill you! You know... The one of the baby dinosaurs comes after Drift. I'll kill you. I don't, I'm sorry, but that line doesn't work well for me with the Autobots. And I don't know, uh, to me, that just like, it just does not work. I never thought it worked. And it's one of those things that it's like, it's been in like Michael Bay's films. I think probably even since the, like, I don't know. If, I know it was in the fourth one a lot. And I know it's now a lot in Transformers The Last Night. And hearing Optimus Prime say, say I'll kill you, just... It doesn't work for me, and it's something that I think that, like, dialogue-wise, definitely needs to be worked on. I also have another theory about, uh, you know, Anthony Hopkins' character says he's part of the Order of Witwickens, which means he's a relative of Sam Witwicky, but he says he's the last of the Order, and he, in, he uh, brings in, um, you know, uh... John Turturro's character, I thought this was absolutely hysterical that he brought in John Turturro's character into the actual order. You know, I never had a brother. That's nice. Um, but I honestly think, and this is my theory, is that if they do another movie, that maybe they'll have Cade meet um, Sam Witwicky. We don't know if it's going to be the same actor, because we don't know if Shia LaBeouf will come back. I don't know about you guys. As much as I like Spike in G1, I really can't stand can't stand Sam Witwicky's character, uh, you know, in the in the live action film. So I think that that's another character that 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 should be, you know, maybe he could recast him. But if they bring him back, they bring him back. I think it would be important to the mythology of Transformers overall. You know, another thing with uh, some of the characters. Um, you know, the Decepticons themselves, they all come out, they're all, like, you know, locked away, like, as if they're Suicide Squad. And, like, for some reason, I don't understand, like, the actual story doesn't make sense in the film in how they're going about, like, actually releasing the Decepticons. And here they are, they're bringing them out like Suicide Squad. They even have, like, the whole, like, name titles. And I didn't like Suicide Squad, so it's like one of those things, it's like, you're like, oh, I see where they're going with this. And I like the fact they gave the Decepticons personalities, but they killed them really quickly. They killed off Mohawk really fast, they killed off Onslaught really fast. Uh, his fat hair don't get any better than that. Barricade, you know, I'm really curious as to, like, how he survived Dark of the Moon, because we know he survived the first movie, shows up in Dark of the Moon, and now he's alive again in, um, in Transformers The Last Night, so it's kind of one of those, like, head scratchers. And I thought he looked really cool. He was just underutilized. And I think they should have had a bigger battle between him and Bumblebee. They had a really cool thing where Bumblebee half transforms, you know, on, on one of the highways and he just like blasts away Barricade and then Barricade again shows up at the in the end So I think Nitro Zeus and Barricade are both two Decepticons who are alive clearly Megatron survived and when Optimus like drop kicked um, You know Megatron outside of the wall um, He kind of fell out and I, I kind of got like a memory of back when like you know, Rodimus Prime threw Galvatron across the galaxy, and here, like, Megatron got thrown out, so it's, like, kind of, like, the same thing. Here's something I want to address, also, about filmmakers, 
and marketing departments. If you're going to be putting out trailers for movies, don't spoil everything. Try to, you know, bring everything together because I'm start I started to realize as I was watching Transformers the last night again that a lot of this movie was spoiled in the trailers. So if you saw the trailers, it, it, a lot of the cool elements in the movie are pulled out and cuz you're like I've already seen it. And so when you see the movie again, you know, now actually, you know, complete all the bad parts probably stick out like a sore thumb instead of enjoying the good parts of the movie. Um, and which leads me to, you know, as far as Bumblebee, I don't intend to watch another Bumblebee trailer until the movie comes out. I'm going to try and keep my eyes closed from it. I know it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, you're a Transformers YouTuber. And it's like, yeah, but I think it would be better if I don't. Just so that, you know, I'm not spoiled uh, when the new Bumblebee movie comes out. And I can hopefully enjoy that film for what it is. And maybe if that trailer is, um, you know, the trailer that we already got is enough. And that's all I need to see. I know I'm excited, or, or I'm actually not so excited, I'm more so optimistic about the movie. You know, when I when I when I break, boil it down, it was like I enjoyed where they were going. I liked how they were going from here to here to here to here to here. I think that they could have shortened up a lot of, of pieces. I think the dialogue could have been been tightened up a little bit better. And definitely, there was that fatigue about like Transformers. They didn't. So there was a lot of times where Transformers didn't transform. We didn't never saw Optimus Prime actually transform from a truck to a robot. We rarely got to see some of the other Transformers transform, and when they did, it was just kind of like, boom, 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 don't, they're done. And that was it. You only saw them transform maybe once. And then when you see them again, they're already in robot mode, or you already see them, like, moving along. You don't see that, like, fast-paced action. And I almost feel like Michael Bay was burnt out, and this is where I said he was, you know, it was a swan song, because he was trying to fin polish up everything he wanted to get across in this movie, and bring it across and 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 do so but i don't think it was i think it was the best of the best and at the end of the day i still enjoyed it i still think it was a, it was a decent movie as far as like transformers movies are concerned i think it could have been better and and i still rank it like right in the middle i still think that that revenge of the fallen is not as good even though it has better action sequences and i think that age of extinction was just absolutely a, a ter terrible so um i hope every guys are i hope you guys have a good father's day uh you know i want to know what you guys think uh, i hope you've enjoyed my little uh you know re-re-review if you want to see me do re-re-review so or you know upon further review of movies that i've seen before and kind of reviewing again over again uh you know obviously leave your thoughts in the comment section below give me some suggestions maybe i'll do something like goonies or you know superman the movie or anything like that um and I hope you guys uh, have, have an awesome week. I'll, if anybody's going to too many games, I'll see you there. Uh, and as always, guys, until next time, till all are one.